From the Hawaii News Now Digital Center, I'm Billy V, and we get to talk story with Miss Hawaii 2022, Lauren Teruya. Thank you for being here. Aloha, Billy. Thank you for having me. It's been an exciting year for you. Oh my gosh, it feels like <laughs> nonstop, right? Well, let's talk about it. How did this year go from the beginning, from the moment the crown was put on top of your head? What's it been like? This year has just been a big blessing. Like, I tell people, I have a really difficult time describing the job of Miss Hawaii, right? One day you're speaking in front of state leaders. Maybe you're leading a live auction at a fundraiser. You might be in front of 200 second graders dancing your heart out. It's a completely dynamic job that I feel like has been the biggest challenge, but also the most exciting job I've ever had in my life. Okay, so before the pageant, before when you were just deciding that you wanted to try out for Miss Hawaii, and now that you've been in the chair with the crown, was it what you were expecting? I feel like it's it's a difficult, you never really know what to expect just because when I talked to even previous Miss Hawaii's, their advice to me was, your year is what, you make it. You have you have no really set rules as far as exactly what you need to do. But what I would say is I was a yes girl this year. Anytime someone needed something, needed me to be point A, point B, point C, I'd be like, yes, yes, yes. So some days I'd be running from like five different events, much like you. I, I feel like this job has just been completely a wonderful whirlwind. So I think I think it is what I expected because I feel like I could continue to do this for years and years. Well, you know, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, let me just fire away some some questions. This is like, uh, you know, short fire questions. Okay. But the answer doesn't have to be short fire depending on what it is. So mm -hmm. favorite place that you've traveled to as Miss Hawaii outside of the Hawaiian Islands? Outside, okay. I, I just got back from Japan and that was a wonderful experience. I traveled with Ko Aloha Ukulele and we were at their Aloha Festival that hasn't taken place in four years. So Japan has been really locked down as far as, you know, re-welcoming visitors. And so it was the first time to really celebrate Hawaiian culture in Japan, which as you know, they just love it. So to carry that Aloha with me to a place that is also so special to me was Probably the top spot I'm going to name. <laughs> what is the one thing that you learned by being Miss Hawaii? I, I always knew this to my core, but Be Aloha Always has been my principal, like carrying throughout the entire year. You know, whether I am working with children that are six, seven years old or people talking to a room full of 60, 70 year olds, right? Uh, it's just sharing my aloha and, and knowing that I'm I'm just one person, but the things that I've been able to do, like travel to almost every island, like one of my favorites was visiting Molokai and seeing their very first youth theater this year and working with those students, you know, traveling to just inner island on, on Oahu here and, and visiting a lot of our public schools that don't have arts education funding. There's so many different spaces that have been just true blessings that I I, you can never put any monetary value to any of them because they just mean the world, right? Okay, uh, that reminds me, what's your platform? And <laughs> were you able to accomplish whatever it was concerning that platform? Right, so my platform is Arts for All, and I really started it back when I was in high school when I noticed that a lot of public schools didn't have funding for arts, so no dance classes, no music classes. Um, and, and unfortunately, a lot of that hasn't changed since when I was back in high school and the pandemic kind of, you know, exacerbated that problem with budget cuts. So my plan for this year was, OK, maybe it's it's too much to say, give me pots of money so that we can you know, employ more teachers. But what it was was to work with teachers and students on how to incorporate the arts into your classroom even when you're not make, you know, you're in science class or in your math class or in your reading, everybody can have a moment where we stand up and we work together in, in a movement exercise or, or we just do an energizing exercise when we're feeling sleepy after lunch, right? They're really small things, but it gets that excitement to learn back into the classroom. And I think that's what children need more than ever. And it has been successful. I've worked with 
dozens of, and dozens of teachers across our islands, also on the mainland, and brought it to Japan as well. I, I spoke to 800 students while I was there, which I think is the biggest crowd of students I've spoken to in one sitting. I'm sure it's been the biggest crowd of students that they've been to <laughs> in four years. You Probably. Know? That, that's a good point. Um, and, and also just working with some of my national partnerships as well, like Donors Choose. You know, I was able to partner with them throughout the week of Miss America promoting teachers and and students in the classroom working together on positive curriculum that I really think can change the future of how we learn. Are you satisfied with what you've been able to accomplish with the amount of time that you were given? A one year? Right. I mean, I think you, there's always a desire to do more, right? Like, I would like to change the world. Right. <laughs> um, but as far as one person, one thing, I think I did accomplish a lot of my goals. I really wanted to travel to every island, so I didn't make it to Lanai. I didn't make it to Niihau. So <laughs> so maybe I would have loved to be able to go there. Uh, but I, I am proud of the fact that it was an island tour in many ways. I was able to reach so many students, so many teachers, as well as just you know share my message of hope, of aloha, of art, and culture, and that's really what Miss Hawaii has and always will be. Okay, so Lana, you just know that uh, Lauren wants to come <laughs> to your island, okay? So Lana, if you, in I case you out. want to invite her, reach <laughs> out. Okay. Um, what was one of the favorite moments of being Miss Hawaii? Is there a moment that stands out for you? I mean, there there are a million moments. I think one of my absolute favorite, favorite moments is representing our state at Miss America. There's truly like no way to describe what that honor feels like to have our state behind you, to have this feeling of, I'm going to give this my everything because I'm so proud to be Hawaii. Like to just stand on stage and say my name and Hawaii follows. I, I mean, like there's kind of no other state that I'd ever want to say or ever want to rep. So um, just being able to perform, meet, you know, girls that are from every single state across our nation and, and perform my heart out. I, I think that there's really no greater feeling, especially as somebody that has always loved to perform. Was there ever a person that you met, a total stranger, mm -hmm. that you walked away from and, and it was kind of like a wow moment for you? Mm, absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of the students I've worked with has been a wow moment. A lot of these students have never even had a dance lesson or sang in a music class. So I've had teachers come up to me and say, I have never seen that student look excited to be here or I've never heard them contribute in class because maybe there's a language barrier, right? Or maybe that they just don't feel comfortable speaking in an academic, like, right, our academic subjects. So, or maybe they haven't done it in four years. Exactly, so. in person. So th those are the chicken skin moments throughout my year when I hear that it's making a difference, not just for me because I love this, but for our keiki too. Um, I know that you've seen the girls that are going to be uh, wanting to be the next Miss Hawaii and wear the crown after you. Um, and I know that you've been able to meet them interact with them. What advice do you have for them as they get ready to wear the crown next? It's go with your heart, go with your gut all year long. If it feels good, if it feels in line with who you are and what you believe in, do it, right? Even if it's at five o'clock in the morning or past midnight or you feel sleep deprived, this is one year, once in a lifetime, you will never get this time back. And why not do as much as you possibly can? Some people have to grow into what the crown is. Mm. And, and, but as long as I've known you, you've been there all the time. <laughs> How do you keep that energy up? And do you have moments when you just don't have that energy? It honestly comes from immense amount of gratitude to be exactly where I am. I, how could you be right? Like, I can't even talk. How could you be upset? Look at this. This is 
awesome. And it's such an honor. And there's so, such a small amount of people that get to do this in their life. I'm sorry, Billy. Like, you're never going to wear this crown. I know. I know. I'm not going to have the sash. And... Yes. I know it was a big life goal of yours. <laughs> but, but, but even in those moments where, you know, you're drained, you're running on fumes, I really have to take a perspective, a moment, and say, hey, you know, this is a dream, and it's a pocket of time. Um, and even when it's over, I still, I, I mean, it's still such a big part of me now that I, I, I will not, I'll hold with me forever. And that's the other thing, like being a part of the Miss Hawaii sisterhood. I know you know so, so many Miss Hawaii's, yep. but they are incredible women that continue to change our community, that continue to fundraise for missions that they believe in, that have gone on to build nonprofits, businesses, they're doctors and lawyers and, and performers. And that's that's my sisterhood. So, I mean, it, yeah, it just gives me chicken skin because I get to be a part of something so special, not just for this year, but forever. What do you want to tell? I, I know we've talked about what do you tell the girls, mm. but what do you tell, do you have a message like to everyone else? My message is mahalo from the bottom of my heart. Like I have felt I have, oh, there you are. I have felt gratitude for all the support, you know, like whether it's at Miss America or just coming out to a walk that we're fundraising for or performing or attending. The support that I've received from our entire Hawaii community is the reason why it feels so, it, I felt so much pride standing on the Miss America stage. So I can't thank our community enough for your support. And I hope you continue to support the Miss Hawaii organization because it is the largest scholarship opportunity for women. It's how we seek higher education, the opportunity to pursue, you know, greater things for education to bring back to our community and really make a difference down in our ground i mean i think like winning miss america is is incredible but but being miss hawaii for me is i i couldn't ask for anything more when did you decide that you wanted to get into media mm. so i've always loved people so maybe that also comes back to energy as i fuel off of other people right that the energy you receive from others, it's like, battery recharge, here I am, I'm all good. <laughs> Energized uh, bunny, you know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. So my when I went to college, it was initially for performance for theater. Um, but as I continued to go about my, my studies, I, I realized, like, I love connecting with people. Is there is there a job for this? <laughs> and that's when I found journalism and I started interning here and I continuously fell in love with different media. You interned media. here twice. I interned here twice. I know. I was I was a baby the first time and then the second time I actually had graduated from college. Um, so so two different phases in my life. The one where I'm like really really learning the robes, just the basics. And the second time I was lucky, I got to work with Ash and Jonathan on their This Is Now Noon show. Um, and throughout, even before Miss Hawaii, I was applying to work here, like full time. I really wanted to work here. Um, but I, it was just timing, you know, not everything worked out. And But my heart has always like desired so much to be here so the fact that after the the pageant is over and i get to be here full time it's it's a dream come true billy i didn't know what to say was, when you were in college you you knew that this was already how much before college when you were in high school or no i i think throughout high school i was very very focused on performing on stage like mm. the musical theater was kind of my entire world I was doing I think I was doing like four musicals a year at Diamond Head Theater <laughs> that's like pretty much the whole season wow yeah so I was in it in it in it um and then it was in college well USC has this like beautiful media center and you see people working all the time in the studio it feels very much like here and I was like whoa I want to do that <laughs> did, you know did being in Miss Hawaii help you, did that money go to scholarship that you used at USC? So it didn't go to previous things. 
it can't go to previous um, college that you've already done. Oh, okay. But I did go to Harvard Business Schools and get a leadership um, principal certificate. It's not like a full on degree, but you're able to take classes through Harvard Business School to get whatever certification they have, like finance classes and all these different things. But I, I wanted to kind of solidify my leadership skills, my presence as a as a leader as I was going into so many schools and talking to high schoolers that were preparing for college or I was even talking to elementary and middle school. And I wanted to have like a real foundation so that I could Relay, relay messages that would actually be helpful for their future. Okay, so you tackled USC and then you, you used what you won at Miss Hawaii to do Harvard classes. Yes. Did those help? I'm guessing that those helped. They were amazing and I did it before Miss America as well. And so when I watch my interview uh, for Miss Hawaii and then put it next to my Miss America interview, it's like two different people, night and day. So I, I do think that education changes your game and and just your overall belief in yourself right wow. there's a there's an inner part of when you're speaking that needs to come out authentically but also just you have to know that you feel good about what you're saying and i think when i was you know trying to be miss hawaii for the, <laughs> there's a little bit of self doubt in there you're not quite sure but when i went up for miss america i went up with the idea of i know who i am I know what I want and I know what I can do for this organization. And if you like me, then great. And if you don't, that's okay too. So has that translated now to life uh, past pageant, past Miss Hawaii, knowing who you are, what you want as you go forward? You're here in, in this job, but let's talk about life in general. Life in general. So. I would I would be lying if I said I'm the most secure person and everything is and I'm super certain in everything in life. But I will say that I'm comfortable with who I am today, right now, and and what I'm doing. And I think that will continue to grow. I think I'm you know ever changing and ever evolving, um, but so much more secure in where I am and who I am because of this year. Is there anything else? to add and i would love to invite our entire hawaii community to come on out and support our women that are vying for the crown this year we are back at the historic hawaii theater it's been a while is so exciting right pandemic has you know pushed us back a little bit so to be back in the theater and to be i mean that is just the most it's such a gorgeous place to be in right and as you know just historically so sentimental to so many miss hawaii so we are having a pre-show of a lot of our former Miss Hawaii's who will be performing so that's super exciting and and of course the competition I'm performing twice so nice. <laughs> nice. so it'll be an exciting night and um, I hope that our entire Hawaii community can come out and support all right. Once again, talking story with Lauren Teruya, Miss Hawaii 2022. If you want more information, tickets, or just information about Miss Hawaii, the organization itself, go to MissHawaii.org.